Good morning and welcome to Synergistic Horsemanship. And we're here with uh, Dr. Shane Miller and he's going to give us a tour of his facility here, his equine rehabilitation facility, and show us what they've got going on. Great. So. Well, thank, thanks for coming, Kristen. Appreciate it. And yeah. yeah, let's kind of take a, a walk around and kind of show you what we put together here and see, uh, see what we do. That sounds great. Excellent. So this barn was existing. Okay, this portion of the barn was is part of the hospital. It's been existing, but then when we've uh, Tahoe Equine Rehab uh, has taken over this barn, and uh, we've leased this now. Um, and this is our, our space. Uh, and you can see we, you know, when we ha we have these horses that come in for conditioning and rehab, um, you know, it's quasi spa, right? So they got to be comfortable. And in our environment, that means heated barn insulated barn so that's some of the, the renovations that we've done to this facility is we've insulated the whole thing as you can see we have tube heaters down here um, so we you know we it's got to be a comfortable place uh, for these horses everything's got to be as, as optimal as possible when we talk about the healing of injuries especially uh, so not only you know environment but nutritionally and all that sort of stuff goes with it so so that's what we've done in this part of the, the facility um, for the home of the horse, where we house the horses. So whenever, when a client comes in to bring in a, a horse, they want to know what they're going to get in the barn. Are uh -huh. What sort of program do you guys recommend for them, or does it depend on the discipline? Totally, yeah, excellent question. It really does depend on the discipline, and it also depends on where they're at in their current conditioning, uh, what their aspirations are, is it just a stopgap in bad weather time to get these horses to stay fit so that when they're ready to go back, it's not a lot of downtime. And that's the, a great thing about the conditioning piece of this. Um, and all of that conditioning is low impact, right? So it doesn't take more than 20 minutes of water work uh, on the treadmill for these horses to really condition well full body and, and that's a beauty, beautiful thing about it um so yeah it's really dependent on discipline and also where they're at where they're going uh, what's on the schedule how can we help them be ready for what they have planned out for the year so and i see that you guys have horses that stay here in the barn but do you guys have horses that trailer in for like once a week twice a week conditioning yep, we for do so, so we have all the above yes we'll have horses from where depend on where we have a lot coming from california already which is great yeah, those horses will come. They'll stay for a month. Uh, they'll stay for longer. They can say we've had some uh, a horses that stay for up to three months. So again, that's more rehab because they've got an injury that we're working through. Um, but yeah, for conditioning piece, yeah, we have haulers. We have some local people who are hauling in three days a week, mm -hmm. that's awesome. and they come and they swim, and that's what they do. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. I, I know for me, I've had horses in the past where I wish that this was available then. So. Yeah, and for the local thing, it's almost kind of like, you know, we kind of do like a little punch card thing. Okay. You know, where they buy a package of okay. swims and, you know, they get uh, 12 for 10 and then they come and when they can and lots of them will come to you. That's awesome. And so they, I'm assuming they just call and schedule a time and then you guys are ready exactly. for it. Exactly. Yeah, they kind of work it out with Tom and say, hey, you know, I want to come Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay. Tell me a good time to come, and then depending on what else we have going on, they pick a time that's really consistent, so they know that they're always going to be here, and we just fit them into the mix. And okay, and I just saw Tom uh, vacuuming the horse and getting them all pretty and groomed up. And yeah, it's kind of like you know any pool that we get into, we're supposed to shower before we get in, right? But <laughs> is he taking one <laughs> in? Now? Yeah, so I think he's taking one in now. And then this is obviously the rest of the facility that we've uh, where all the uh, guts of this all start. So, in ground off the treadmill here, you know, you probably want to see this horse kind of go in the water here. Okay. And what is this? Um, what is this one here? Is this the treadmill? Yeah, so this is the treadmill. So, if you walk in there, you can see the ramp going in and out. Um, there's a 12 foot treadmill on the bottom of this. And now, Tom is gauging that. There's a lot of Will, you know, depending on again what they're here for, will be 
start walking on the treadmill while typically starting around two miles an hour. Um, it surprises what two miles an hour in water will really do. Uh, right now you can see he's going like two and a half miles an hour. And he'll work that up. Uh, and then I'm going to do some things where, you know, they'll take him up to four miles an hour, which a horse in water on a treadmill at that depth is a really good workout. And again, all that's going to be dependent on whether it's the straight conditioning or whether they're we're rehabbing an injury. Uh, and you know that's all taken into account because what they're going to be doing and how much exertion and, and, and how firm it is. And you said earlier, is, is it usually about 20 minutes with a treadmill? No, 20. Yeah. Yeah, 20, 20 is about to be the max. Uh, and I also watch these horses when they're you can swim or not. But I'll watch them make sure they're not getting stressed. I'll show up to them. I was going to ask you, how do you train them? Do they get in the water? The process depending on the horse? The process depending on the horse. Uh, we usually today to be able to get this cut. And then uh, I'm just getting them to come in and then I get them in here, I run the blowers on them without running the treadmill first, let them get used to that, quiet, and then I'll start them on the treadmill slow or where they just start taking their feet away from them to where they start getting an idea how it works. And I'll probably do five minutes. Okay. Then I bring it back out, go back in. Okay. I go okay. back in again, and then usually about the third time, they'll do like he did. Walk right in. Yeah. Go take your video camera and run it over his back. When, so, when have you ever been able to see the muscles on the back? in a working situation. You don't. You're always on top of them yourself. So just go run that over. You'll see how much those muscles in the back and everything. Uh, there's a lady coming in here with Dr. Laura uh, in a little while with her voice. She's in there. He had an injury. We've been doing this three days a week on him. Uh, we lasered him. She said, I be here I Out. So, so Dr. Miller was saying that they see uh, they see some pretty big changes in the short period of time because it's such a strong core workout. Yeah, and that's you know it's just everything's kind of comes full circle, right? You know, you know, any of us who go through injuries, what are all of the physical therapists and everybody really talks about, especially for anybody in the horse discipline, strong right. core, right? Right, can help so many things. And the more we learn about the biomechanics, the physiology, the kinesiology in the horse, uh, also realizing how important strong core is for these guys as well. So, uh, and this is one of the best ways to do that, of really engaging full body uh, that we're really seeing a lot of uh, help with. That's awesome. That's okay, awesome. In instance, in Texas, I swam some Grand Prix horses for a guy by the name of Peter Petsnick. He's a million dollar Grand Prix rider. He had a gray horse that he'd always make the jump off, but he could not, he flattened out in the finals in the jump off. I swam that horse. He went to the next two and won them both. He couldn't believe it, what it did. It just made such a big, strong improvement over his back and going stronger. And he was in better shape. This is a good way to get them in shape without pounding their legs. Well, and imagine what it would do to 
it, you know, what it does for tendon injuries and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah so exactly. Yeah, so it's a way that these horses can seal exercise guys because movement is key, mm -hmm. right? So whenever we have tendon ligament injuries, we need movement. But it, ideally, it's got to be in, it's, as controlled as possible. And, you know, we, we try and do that with hand walking and tack walking. Um, but when we can get these horses in water, um, we can, again, we have a lot of that muscle engagement and tendon ligament, you know, contraction and extension, which really helps, but without the concussive pounding and force. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you said earlier that you guys need to clean down the horses really well before you guys get them in the water. Can you explain to us a little bit about how the system works and why that is? Yeah, well, it's just when we're running multiple horses through here a day, uh, you know, we're dealing with water. So just like you and I, we, we have these horses as clean as possible. You know, they'll get vacuumed. They'll get their all their feet picked out before they come in the water, uh, just so they're as clean as possible. And then when they go out, they get a bath. Okay, it's really important. We get all all of those chemicals off of these horses. They get a bath. They uh, you know get scraped down. They get a blanket on, and then they dry. Uh, it's really important that we go through that process. And every single one of those horses that comes in and out of here gets that same program. And it's hygiene, it's cleanliness, it's water cleanliness. Uh, you know, it's. It's dermatological stuff for the horses so that we're, you know, they're not picking up anything from us. Right. So all right. those things really critical. Right. And so with all that, it takes a lot of I elbow love grease. Hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of elbow grease. It does. Yeah. 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 A, lot a, lot, of, a lot of good quality yeah. care. A lot which, of bad though, yes. <laughs> which we know they'll get here, so that's yeah. great. <laughs> Three filters on it. And there's baskets, you can see where the baskets are there. That strain into your just like any filter. So it strains into there, and then uh, the pumps are there. The two over this way are jets. So they get hit with jets, and there's blowers that blow the water too. So they're getting massaged too at the same time. And, uh, and one that's a little bit further along in the we go out of this, we put them in a spa then. So you're going from 95 to 35. Uh, so you suck those tendons down and you tighten everything up. Uh, it, it's a real what it does. Well, and, and you said too that you guys do some other modalities here as well, some laser and that type of stuff too. So can you explain to us a little bit about some other treatments that yeah, you guys so have too? Yeah, so the other um, instrument that we have here uh, that kind of does the rest of the rehab or another added modality is a class 4 laser. Um, it's pretty new in the industry for us. Uh, it's called a regenerative laser, so much different than kind of the K lasers, which are, you know, the class 2 lasers. Um, the class 4 laser is nice because of depth of penetration. Okay. And there's always... We don't have any good studies on some of the other K laser or lower class lasers in horses uh, as far as efficacy uh, in that how far does it penetrate, um, skin thickness, skin color, all those have an impact on how well those lasers um, are absorbed. Class 4, quite a bit different uh, beast in that you know we know, and, and there's actually some really early scientific evidence at the cellular level of how those lasers are helping, you know, reduce inflammation, collagen fiber alignment, populating some of the local um, stem cells to help heal injuries. And so we have a class 4 laser here that we use uh, for a various number of, you know, myriad of injuries, soft tissue, bone. Um, so yeah, we add that to the mix depending on what's needed. Um, Tom does also some electromagnetic Pulse. Okay. Okay. Great. Right. The BMF. Yeah. Can you explain to us a little bit about how that works? And uh, he can do that. He's the smart one. Yeah. Well, I, Tom obviously has a lot more experience than I do uh, on the electromagnetic, but it's really all about more of you know um, cellular continuity uh, of getting the cells to work in unison 
so that all of those channels are open for impasse and egress uh, so that at the cellular level things are working better. Um, so we're fluid is getting transmitted through the system. We're opening up blood vessels. We're opening up lymphatics. And so, you know, because all of our nutrition comes through the blood or lymphatics to a lot of our, our cells and a lot of our muscular skeletal system. And so if we don't have good function at the cellular level, then we've got a blockade somewhere. Or there's shunting happening. And so that pulse electromagnetic really helps in that arena to get us, um, you know, functioning better at that level. Yeah. And one of the things I wanted to bring up too for you guys that aren't familiar with this facility, as he mentioned earlier, uh, Tahoe Equine Rehabilitation leases this, or leases this building, correct? But they're also part of a veterinary hospital, so they can do ultrasound, x-rays, diagnostics on the injuries in-house, correct? You know, Chris, that's a really good point because you know, this isn't new for me, obviously. I've been working on lame horses for 30 years. Um, and so I, you know, I'm blessed that I have an opportunity to work on a lot of performance horses, which have injuries, unfortunately, right? And so I understand the importance of rehab and conditioning uh, and physical therapy. So I, over the last 11 years of being back here in, in the Valley and in Nevada, have dealt with a lot of injuries, obviously, and I refer these horses out before we put this together to California. Um, I do a lot of work in California, but it it's really hard to keep my finger on the pulse of those horses to stay on top of them when they're three and a half hours away. Uh, my schedule just doesn't allow it to be able to see those horses weekly, um, and I know that things get lost in translation. The really nice thing about here is that whether it's a case of mine or another local veterinarian, they have another place to come to send their clients, to bring their horses, and have veterinary care. And so we're monitoring these horses very closely. We're following them very closely. We're doing progress exams on them weekly uh, and daily if needed to figure out what do we need to change. How are things going? Things are going great. I'm not happy with this. We need to change this. We need to change time. We need to add therapy. We need to take away therapy. All of those things, I think, I know we are managing much better awesome. when we have that integration involved. Well, it's just, we're all team players for the horse, right? Yeah, well, as yeah. you know, it takes a team. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> it takes an army to, make, to, to get these horses to do what they do and to keep them doing it. And that's always the trick. Uh, in our barn, we have a sign that says... Uh, Dogs have owners, cats have people, horses have staff. So. That is spot on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got people. <laughs> yes, we do. Lots of it. To make to make everybody a successful, happy venture. So, uh, do you want to show us what the, the water spa is? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, come on over. And... I'll kind of show you the spa here. So, this is the saltwater spa. Okay, so it's basically ice therapy, right? So you can see uh, it's a, a fully contained unit. These horses come in. Uh, obviously, it's dry. All the water is stored next to it in this white container. This, like the uh, treadmill, has its own pump, its own filter. So again, we're, uh, you know, having to keep the plugs of the cleanliness. Okay. The other thing is when these horses come in here, I don't know if you saw at the treadmill, but we have a, a skimmer over there that we use to get poop, you know, and the, they're still horses, right? Yeah. So these guys, when they come in here, they're well a diaper, okay. essentially. So they'll put a diaper on, they'll come in to um, the spa, we'll close it all up, and it's very nicely sealed, and then we'll come up to the front. And then this is where they'll be, depending on their size. And Tom's going to fill it up. And then here's all the controls. So essentially, it's, it's an ice bath, obviously. And we'll get that about 35 degrees. And it's a way to, you know, anti ice. Act. We all know the importance of ice and anti, and anti inflammation therapy. Right. 
Now, can so, you explain to our viewers why you guys are using salt water as opposed to regular water? Permeability. Yeah, tissue permeability. Uh, it is one of the biggest issues. And, it, you know, it's just like with, with us. Um, you know, we, we use obviously regular water for ice purposes and things like that. But with the salt, we can cool it down quicker. Okay. Okay. Um, and then tissue permeability is helpful with, with salt. So. Okay. That's great. So So again, we can use this for lots of different reasons, yeah. okay? You know, we have some laminitis cases here. It's great because it's very hard to ice feet. Yeah. Um, so this makes it really nice way to do that. Um, and then not as much on the conditioning piece unless these horses we want to, after they go and work hard, we want to cool them down, which is always good practice, right? Right. Uh, we can do that, but certainly for rehabilitation purposes, we have some acute injuries, muscle, tendon, ligament, joint, post-operative, once the incision heals, this type of therapy is great as far as a potent anti-inflammatory. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's natural. And yeah. it is natural, <laughs> yeah. Yep. And I'm assuming you guys train the horses to get it. Yeah, they're, they're quite a bit more amenable to this. It's kind of like stocks or anything like that in the trailer. You know, this isn't, you know, other than when we turn the jets on the first time, it's a little bit. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah. but most yeah. of them are pretty cool with it. They are. Yeah. They're, then they get used to very quickly. That's great. That's great. That's pretty neat, all the options. So I'm assuming they probably turn on the, sometimes runs the pump, sometimes runs the blowers. Yeah, so the blowers, the chiller, you know, which when we, you know, turn that on, we put them on the pump. Uh, the pump is going to put the back and forth on the feeding, the regular standing and the reserve tank. Uh, we certainly have to cut it off the uh, exercise. Yeah, it's pretty high tech. Yeah. Sure, well, they, you know, some of these, if they actually have uh, mobile, you know, there are some of these, and you guys have probably seen them at some of the shows, uh, where they can do that, uh, bring these around mobily so horses can get in the spa. That's cool. Well, we guys certainly have built a wonderful place. Well, thank you. It's um, It's been a fun project, um, as all projects. It's been <laughs> adding yeah. ups and downs. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's... You know, it, it is something that is now offered in the area, in the state, that we don't have. Uh, and so rather than send these horses over the hill and kind of losing that contact with them and losing the ability to keep my eyes on them, if they're my cases, it, it offers me that, but anybody. Right. It offers anybody, any in, in the horse business, you know, owners that just want to come and condition their horses. If owners have horses with injuries, their veterinarians can send their cases here. Uh, those veterinarians can monitor those cases. They can have us here, one of our staff members, monitor those cases. Uh, you know, a lot of positive things happen when, you know, when everybody's working in unison yeah. and together. So. Over. I hope we're all here for the same goal. Well, right? hopefully so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know? Exactly. and so that's all this is about. It's just trying to provide, you know, another level of service for, you know, our equestrians in the area. Yeah, that's great. And that's then, so, if people want to make an appointment with you guys, you know, how do they get a hold of you guys to use the facility and to get on board with treatment plan? Um, for that's their horse? a great question because you put me on the spot as far as our phone number. <laughs> I'd have to ask Tom what our phone number is. Um, yeah, there's uh, our website is just about built, um, so we're not quite done yet with that. You probably want to watch this horse go out of that. So our website's almost done. We just have been trying to finish getting pictures out. Wow. Um, so what's our website is completely built and we're going to go on our website and you know, schedule sites through our website.
Um, but otherwise, yeah, they can work with and call. I'm trying to remember the number right now. Um, you call, That's make okay. an appointment. You know, come, some people will still call through Great Basin. Uh, they can get in contact with myself or uh, Tom. Um, but Tom is, is kind of the brains behind this. He runs it. He does all the work on the horses. Uh, and he's got another two people of, uh, on our staff uh, for Tahoe Equine that helps him out. And, and what we'll do is, uh, at the end of the interview, we'll get, we'll get the number and we'll post it in the subject below so they Great. can contact you guys. Great. So. And yeah, there's a number and email as well. Yeah. One more to email. For yeah. Any questions or scheduling or anything like that? Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so now, now we've traveled outside and uh, Dr. Miller is going to explain to us what they have going on out here. Yeah, so uh, one of the other pieces that's pretty vital when we have a rehab and conditioning program is, is a Euro sizer like this. Um, this way these horses can walk or trot freely uh, in that space. Uh, we went with, with a little bit bigger design. This is an eight horse. Uh, oftentimes we'll uh, separate the horses by a space so we'll put four horses in here at a time uh, obviously you could put up to eight but you know the nice thing about this it's it's bigger so it's a bigger circle mm -hmm. so they're not working in you know or moving traveling in such a smaller confined circle so we like this size uh, a little bit better for what we're doing as far as rehabilitation so not you know so it all kind of works uh, in unison together you know there's some reasons why we'll put these horses in here first. Mm -hmm. um, depending on what the issue is, we may not swim them yet, but we still want them moving. Mm -hmm. uh, so they'll come into the Eurosizer. Uh, okay. So we, we, you know, it's just another arson, arsenal in our tool that we'll use to, for these horses to exercise. Uh, whether again, it's at a walk or at a trot, um, you know, each direction uh, really just dependent. Some of our horses will warm up here first, Okay, they'll walk for 10 minutes and then they'll go in, they'll go into the water. Okay. Uh, so it's, and I'm assuming that probably just depends on what kind of injury they have yep. or what their conditioning program is. Yep. Cause you're going from a, you know, more concussion on the ground to yep. less concussion in the, uh, in the treadmill. E exactly. So there's some of these horses where, wherever they're at in their rehabilitation, they might start off here, go to water and only start off here at a walk, mm -hmm. go to water and then maybe end here at a trot. Okay. Depending on what we're treating. Okay. So that's and great. that's another way that we use that to That's great. Yeah. And yeah. then we're in the process of, of finishing up a little area over here where we'll, we'll actually have some arena. Oh cool. Um so we're if if needed, some of these horses will be ridden. Okay. Whether it's by the trainer, by the owner, uh, or potentially by our staff. It depending on if, if that's needed in their rehabilitation schedule. Oh so. fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean you guys have got a pretty nice Euro sizer here. I've seen it, seen a few, and this one's pretty great. Yeah, so. it is. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's a big size. You know, it has water. It's kind of has all the bells and whistles on it. Uh, uh, the thing that we're needing still is we got to cover it. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, as you know, as we all know, living in this valley, we have to deal with the wind. Mm -hmm. This doesn't like wind very much. So mm, as you, can I don't <laughs> like wind very much. <laughs> so. But as as I was telling Tom, I said, Tom, you know, the only thing about moving here is you got to worry about the wind. He goes. Shane, if you're gonna have a view like this, you gotta deal with something. <laughs> and if I gotta deal with the wind, I'll yeah. take it. So yeah. sometimes I really that. hope that the horses know what they get to look at. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well this is a great, great addition and your place is just wonderful. Well thank you. Thank you very much. It's like it, it's been a fun project and ultimately if uh, it's all about if we can help the horse and better the horse and mm -hmm. that's what we're after. Yep, and uh, you know while we're here, uh, Shane has been gracious has graciously um, decided that he would help us answer a question about the current coronavirus situation, yeah. and and even coronavirus in horses. So can you explain to me a little bit what we know about the the, the current type of coronavirus that yeah. horses get? Well, the current so we deal with coronavirus in horses. Okay, it's it's we've been dealing with it for a long time. Uh, however, it's a different coronavirus it's a different subspecies of the of the virus and it's a gi related uh condition so when we have horses that contract coronavirus it's gi disturbances mm -hmm. okay so all the things that come with that like salmonella uh you know that we deal with in horses coronavirus is is that's the body system that it affects so we don't deal with any respiratory issues 
in the current coronavirus or the coronavirus that we have in the horse, um, which is different than the coronavirus that we are all dealing with now and learning more about every single day, every hour. It seems like mm -hmm. it, it all does seem to change. So in you and I, it's a respiratory condition, mm -hmm. um, but not the same with horses, different virus, not communicable uh, from human to horse. Uh, now, the other is true, like if horses get coronavirus, could we pick that type of coronavirus up? Yes, it would. We could, kind of like salmonella. So we have to take all those disinfectant measures and cleanliness measures and infectious disease control measures when horses have coronavirus. So they'll often go into isolation. Uh, we'll wear booties and gowns and gloves and stuff like that just because we don't ingest it because then we can get diarrhea right. from that or we can get GI disturbances. So totally different. And why can horses give it to us, but we can't give it to horses? Um, well, it, it all just has to do in the, in the transmission rate. Right. So like with this current coronavirus that we're dealing with, humans cannot pass it on. Horses are not affected by this current coronavirus, the COVID-19, mm -hmm. as far as it doesn't affect their respiratory system. Great. Well, thank yeah. you so much for answering that. I know we kind of dropped that on you. This yeah, morning. no worries. Well, like I said, it's we're everybody. It's affecting absolutely everybody, and it's changing hour by hour, day by day. And you know, we're still going to learn a whole hell of a lot, a, a whole lot more about it as mm -hmm. far as how come it's you know sparing the young kids. How, how yeah. come kids aren't getting really seem to be getting infected? So there's so much more we got to learn mm -hmm. uh, about this, and even learn from humans to animals and you know all the whole you know the rest of the companion animals the dogs and cats and how are they impacted by this uh as well as the horses so yeah it's just more big, to follow it's just right? a big enigma right now so, <laughs> yeah well thank you so much shane and uh, you're more than welcome thank you guys for coming really appreciate it and coming to check it out and um get the word out i mean yeah. we're here to, to help service the the area and the region so yeah well and we're we're here to help spread the word Excellent. so yep well thank you guys so much for following us today and remember to subscribe to our channel talk to you soon see you